So I have Bob Gent here with Gent Motors and myself, Kaylee Filio with Parts Edge. So I want to start with you telling us about your dealership and the history of it. And then we'll talk about why you hired Parts Edge. Okay, great. Thanks for having me, Kaylee. Appreciate the opportunity and, and happy to uh, give my story. I'm a third generation uh, automobile dealer. Uh, my grandfather started a uh, store in 1942. My father took that over and then we sold that store 60 years after he started it. And just mainly because there were too many family members in it, which happens, I think, a little bit in our business. Yeah. And then I went over with my father and bought a store in a town 30 minutes away from that original store in Greeley, Colorado. And I, I bought the Chevy store there in 1988 and pretty rough go of it. I was commuting from Denver where I lived at the time for a year we commuted. And so we had an hour drive back and forth. Uh, my wife worked in the store with me at the time and we had put all of our money savings from the, the sale of the previous dealership into the store and basically the first year we lost all of it. And I, I was um, not sure what was going to happen. I didn't know uh, if I was going to have to um, go bankrupt or, or what, but by the grace of God and, and things working out and my father and, and some other key instrumental people that helped me as well as my wife, we got the thing turned around and now it's a fantastic dealership. We have grown it. I moved the dealership in 91 to a new location, and we've only had a great success. I think I only had one other losing month since that first year, and that was in 08 when things were getting a, a, a little rough. But other than that, we've had every month has been profitable. We added Cadillac in 2000, so it's now a Chevy Cadillac dealership in Greeley, Colorado. That's awesome. That's an awesome story. And there is a fourth generation starting in the dealership. My son is is a, a manager there now. So that's awesome. Keep it going. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of that, just managing through all those years, how has the how have you guys managed through the pandemic, and how is it? Um, kind of, I'm sure people are asking you that, but since we're on that topic. Well, it's definitely been a challenge, um, of course, something we've never seen before. So um, it's a lot of, um, we've had a lot of people out sick, uh, very sporadic. Sometimes it's COVID, sometimes it's not. And yet you got to be careful with having anybody that has any kind of symptoms uh, around. So mm -hmm. we we fumbled and, and listened to as many uh, seminars, Zoom, Zoom meetings as we could through NADA and then our Colorado Auto Dealers Association was very on top of this. So we, we gathered as much information as we possibly could to, to work through it. We were closed down. The state closed our showroom down for the month of April. Wow. We did qualify for the, or we got the PPP. We're still working through our, our forgiveness with that, but we feel like we'll get it forgiven. And it was a lot of just learn as you go. Uh, you, I'm sure we made mistakes, but n knock on wood, we've we've kind of gotten through it um, unscathed. We had a, a fantastic year, as most dealers have. Yeah, and in fact, a record year as far as as profits because yeah. of you know everything that's going on with it. Uh, lower expenses and and higher margins have contributed to that. So. In that regard, it's it's been great, but you know we've had we've had some sick people, and it it it's just we we've had people go down, and and nobody we had I I will take that one person ended up in the hospital on on a respirator, but he has recovered and is back at work with us now. So it it was touch and go, and something I hope to not have to go through again. <laughs> no, none of us want that again. Just got to keep moving forward. Yep. Yeah, I thought I'd ask since, you know, you've been through so many different changes with all the years. So, so tell us about your parts operation and 
how, you know, we've been working together for about four years now and just why you hired Parts Edge. Yeah. So I had for most of my 30, 30 some years in the business, a, a parts manager that was with me from the beginning. And in fact, when I bought the store, he was there and everything ran great. He was a very good manager and controlled it. Probably was a little conservative, which may have cost us a little bit of business, but at least he was tight on the inventory and and never ran into any uh, big issues in in the parts department, kind of let it run on its own with this manager. Mm-hmm. He retired, and that was probably about six, seven years ago. And <clears throat> so I put in his place one of the parts counter uh, people and promoted him to manager, thought that was going to go good, and figured out that it, it, it wasn't the inventory got way out of line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kept hearing the wrong things and you know, the, the, the one comment that always bugged me, uh, was that, Hey, obsolescence, you can't count obsolescence until 15 months because of rim, because of GM rim. And I kept hearing that. And so our inventory just kept getting older and older and older because of that. And I thought, well, he's probably right Uh, until uh, I went to a group 20 meeting, a good dealer friend of mine from Whitefish, where you guys are out of, Mm -hmm. Don K told me about Parts Edge. I knew I needed to fix something. So I I called Chuck and signed up immediately. I liked, I, I, I really liked the breakdown of the inventory. I like to know what I own. And is my responsibility that I can't send back on rim, and therefore we have a different obsolescence gauge on on that money than I do on rim. I know rim I can send back at fifteen months, mm-hmm. but my inventory it's obsolete at twelve months in my book, and and I want non guaranteed. Yep. Inventory. Yeah. So you're talking about the performance report that we provide to you guys every month. We break yep. down the inventory, and it's easy for you as a dealer and the parts manager to be on the same level as understanding what's going on with the inventory. Yes. Before I was confused, didn't understand it. RIM confuses the whole picture in my book. Of course, we all have our bias towards RIM. There's good good, good aspects to it and very bad aspects to it, but it is what we have. And so we have to live with it. But I, I don't want to be tied to that with the inventory that I own. And that report breaks that down beautifully for me and, and separates it out. And then I can kind of see the inventories and, and then you give us guides on that too, which is nice uh, as to where we should be. So we, we use those and just make sure that our manager is, is handling that, that inventory correctly. The, the other thing that you all do is keep us in compliance with RIM, which I love. You know, really, you're you're our <clears throat> our third pair of eyes in our parts department. We of course have ourselves and our and our manager, and we have GM with a pair of eyes on our parts department. Yeah, uh, which is not a bias. They're, they're very biased, as we all know. And so to rely upon them as an as as somebody to look out for us you know, they're, they're biased. They're trying to sell parts to us. And so I I understand their position, but I don't want to rely upon them entirely. And then the third set of eyes is parts edge. And you guys are unbiased. You're trying to help us comply. You're trying to help, help us manage our inventory. And, and you do a lot of it for us, which takes a load off of our manager that, you know, I, he keeps saying, well, guy, I got to do this. Well, ask Parts Edge to send you that, you know, or ha- have them do that. You're, the service is just fantastic. And when we want to send back parts, you know, we'll call you all and, and you'll give us a list of what we should send back or what we should try and sell to, uh, you know, uh, another party, another uh, group or, or dealership. It, 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 all of the resources that you have built up over the years we take advantage of that with you and, and it has helped us out immensely. Yeah, definitely. And that, that kind of 
thinks I think of a question with that is a lot of times when I'm talking to dealers is and tell them what we do, they expect their parts manager to do everything and and we're not doing their job. We're just giving them a tool to do their job better because they have what Chuck always says, they have 50 buyer hats. We take 10 of those so that they can focus on growing the business. I say human things, growing the business, employees, all of that, where we focus on the DMS and giving them the tools that they need to be more efficient. So, And and with that, uh, as you say, it has allowed us to really get into the nitty gritty, nitty gritty of, of the parts department. We, we would have never talked about, you know, what is our, our phase in criteria and what is our, you know, our, our optimal stocking level and moving parts around in different sources and, and having parts matrices that price different parts in different ways. It, it just has allowed us to dig in deeper because you all are taking those 10 things off of that manager's plate. It really allows us to go deeper into parts and refine it and tune it to be an even better operating machine than what, what we've ever had. Yeah, that's great. And tell me about your parts manager. Cause I remember there was a time, there was a, a switch over. So you were actually working in the parts department at a time. I remember that. Oh yeah. I learned a lot more about parts than I ever wanted to, but it, <laughs> it, it was a good education for me. I, I really never came up through uh, the fixed end. I think uh, that's common. But, yeah. yeah. But when my, I went through one parts manager and then hired another one and, and that, that was a disaster as well. And I finally had had enough and, and, you know, I, I, I didn't want to hold on to a guy until I found a new parts manager. Mm-hmm. I, because I felt the guy could do more damage by being there than if he wasn't. Yeah. So it created that vacuum back there where nobody was there because I, I had to do something and, and we let him go and then there was no manager. So it kind of, it just was a hat that I had to uh, put on and uh, dug into it. And I did have you all as a resource. And then I luckily had the previous parts manager that had worked for me for 25 years that retired from me, he was a phone call away from me. And one of his counter people, his assistants, assistant was also available and he came in and helped me. And we, you know, I had to learn how to send parts back. I mean, it was, uh, uh, you know, how to send cores back. It was like, Oh my God. I, but it taught me a lot. And and now I, I kind of can call out people in the parts department because I kind of know it. Yeah, it's good. I would recommend all dealers to just go in the parts and work it. It's like the undercover boss, right? <laughs> you just exactly. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. And, and you really see the dynamics between the service department and the techs and the parts department gives you a better understanding what goes on there. And, you know, I, my my some of my techs are very good world class techs so you know you you have to listen to them but at the same time you got to look at the the part side of it and you know they'd have you stock everything in the world and and of course you can't so then you start talking to that tech about what do we look at in the parts department to stock it, you know and and if you're doing that correctly you can justify to that tech why you have a part or why you don't. Mm-hmm. If you if you truly are watching, you know, how things are flowing in that parts department and, and what's selling and what's not, it gives you a better understanding so that you can talk to that that tech intelligently and say, this is why and and kind of help ease that situation a little bit. Get them to understand a little bit. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we kind of already covered this, but how would, in your r- words, if you were talking to a dealer, how would you describe what we do for you or in a few words? Well, it's service, a great service. You give us the report. I, I will mention another thing that Chuck did for me when we first started was he, he has me reconcile our inventory every month, the books versus the inventory. 
We also do a perpetual inventory. We also do an annual inventory by a third party company that Chuck recommended to us. Right. And, and then getting the parts. So like our, you know, rim return is through GM. So, but, but you all keep us in compliance with rim. And the other thing that Chuck always likes to do is you don't want to be over on rim. You want to be right at the number. So yeah. if, if your compliance is 90%, don't be at 91, be at 90%. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course you can't be at 88, but you got to be right there okay. where they want you. But why stock parts that aren't selling from rim if you don't, if you don't need to, Yeah, um, uh, you got to comply, but you don't need to add that extra part from them. So that, that has really helped us out in that compliance and then doing the inventory. So like our material return reserve, you all have helped us identify the parts that we want to send back on that, as well as our CSO 11. We never used to do a CSO 11 return. We do it every month now, mm-hmm. uh, religiously. So yeah. any, any parts that are coming up on seven months, we want to get our uh, 70% approximately money back on those and certainly not let them get over a year and become obsolescence on us. Yeah, because not- then if you try and get rid of them through like a parts broker, you, you don't make very much where you could make more doing the CSO. Doggone right. So we watch that. You all send us a report on that. You're also watching, you're again, that third eye watching things for us. So if there's a part that comes up that we're selling a lot of, you all say, hey, this needs to go on your on your daily stock order. So yeah. So, um, so you're having more of the right parts. So you're not running out of parts so your techs aren't unhappy. <laughs> Exactly. And there's, there's the tech side of it that comes into it to make sure that, Hey, we stock this part for you because we, we are watching this mm-hmm. and parts edge helps us with, with that also. So it's that, it's that third set of eyes that is really uh, beneficial to us. And, you know, I, I think it's just helped us with talking to the parts manager also and developing that relationship because we can look at things that are not GM biased, you know, it's, it's a third party. And we just look at those and say, here's where we are. Here's where we want to be. And, and he runs it with those reports, just like he does our group 20 reports Mm -hmm. on the profit side or our job description reports on the human side. We, we've got these reports that help us run the parts inventory clean. Yeah. Awesome. And going back to your parts manager, he wasn't, he was a newer one. So he wasn't seasoned, correct? So we've helped kind of train and yeah, we'll make some strategies for him. I got lucky on, on my, my current parts manager. He was a, a parts counter person. We promoted yeah. him to parts manager and through his ability, through his ability to call you, Chuck, Robert, whoever up there, you know, he's learned a lot. It, it's, it's, t- it, there was a learning curve there, certainly, but I think it was shorter because of, of the, the service that Chuck and, and you all at Parts Edge provide to us. He's gotten up to speed and I, I mean, we're digging into stuff in parts that I, I don't, we haven't in, in a long, long time, if ever. Good. That's good. We always recommend if someone is trying to have a, a new parts manager, if they're struggling to find someone to move up the counter person because they are in the operation. They just need a little bit of guidance and they can be really good. So I'm glad it worked out for you. Yeah, it did. <laughs> We're happy. We're happy. So yeah. uh, you don't have to be a parts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, I used to go to a coffee shop at about six in the morning because I had to get into the parts department and I saw a buddy of mine all the time in the coffee shop. He said, oh, you're still running parts, huh, Bob? Because <laughs> it was so early, you know? Yeah, he knew. <laughs> he knew. If I was there at six, you're still running parts. <laughs> How many months did you do it? I was uh, in there about six months. Wow. Yeah. 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 But it's good. You probably wouldn't take it back. It was a learning curve for me, uh, and and I'm glad I learned it. And but I'm glad somebody else is running it now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Good. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close? Just appreciate all, all that uh, you all do for us uh, at Parts Edge. And uh, awesome. it, it's been a great relationship. Uh, Chuck is such a down to earth guy and yeah. not pretentious at all and, and a joy to talk to. And, you know, he's, he's available. I mean, and, you know, he's, a, I can always reach out to Chuck and, and email or whatever. And he's, uh, he's very accessible and, and wants, I, you can tell when he really wants to help you out. It's, yes. it's you, you can tell it's a passion. To oh try yeah. Chuck loves it. And he's able to do this, you know, because we have the team to to help a team of experts to help him support what we do. So yep. it's it's awesome. We we love working with people that just really love working with us. You know, it makes it better. Yep. Yep. It's been a great relationship. So cool. Well, have it. Thank you for uh, joining us and we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. Parts Edge, the power tool for your parts department. We hope you're leaving feeling motivated, challenged, and inspired. 